Paradise Lost Changing Water Cultures in Chennai and Tamil Nadu A presentation we are all looking forward to by Ms. Nandita Krishna Nandita Krishna, a historian with a doctorate in ancient Indian culture an environmentalist and writer is based in Chennai. She's the president of the C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer Foundation, as well as professor and research guide for PhD programs at the University of Madras. She has also authored numerous books on art, cultural and environmental history. We are highly privileged to have you, Madam, here, and I call upon Ms. Nandita Krishna to present Paradise Lost. Thank you, Mr. Helmut Schippert and Max Muller Bhavan for having invited me here this morning. Closer, okay. Um, next, please. I'm going to ask, start by asking you a few questions. When did you last drink a glass of tap water in Chennai? When did you last pull up a bucket of water from a well and drink it? When did you last sit on the shores of a lake in Chennai? And when did you last bathe in Marina Beach? I'm sure the young people here will turn around and say, never, ever. But I remember doing all these things, and that is the madras we have lost. Next. Look at this girl. When I saw the photo, I was just going through the internet to see what pictures they had on water. And I saw this little girl drinking water from a tap, and I said, oh my god, it could have been any one of us, because we all at school, used to just drink water out of a tap. And today, I don't dare. Today, we buy big um, bubble, what's it called, something huge, uh, bubble loads of water, and we use that for cooking, for drinking, for everything. So this is what was, and this is the paradise we have lost. Next. The ancient name of Madras was Puliur, the land of tigers. and. I, I couldn't believe it when I read it in Dr. K. V. Raman's book, which we published at our foundation. So I ran to the British Library in London, and there I saw drawings of dead tigers and Englishmen, of natives, as they call them, fighting a tiger by hand with just a knife. The British put a price of 25 rupees per head for every predator. So that effectively destroyed the tigers and leopards that lived here. But even my mother remembers seeing leopards in Alwar Pet, where we live, when she was young. Now, what is a tiger's environment? It's marsh, wetlands, thick forest. It's swamps, mangrove swamps, uh, Sundarbans in West Bengal and Bangladesh is a swamp, a mangrove swamp, where you have lots of tigers. Now, could the scrub jungle that we are living in have been the land of a tiger? No. This whole place would have been a marshy land. It, there would have been a lot of water because tigers need water. So there would have been a lot of water over here. But then effectively by deforestation and by destroying the uh, main predator species, we have come, become a, a scrub jungle, which is totally unable to support human life. This is a picture of a tiger. Next one, please, sorry. A tiger being hunted. Of course, the plants look very different, very romantic, but it was Madras. Next. OK, do you know that we have records of 125 yeris? A yeri is an artificial tank, and 50 temple tanks, Koval Kulam. Chennai has lost much of its wetlands and floodplains to urbanization. 
But the offenders are not those whom we blame. We always say, oh, look at the quam. It's all these dirty people living in slums who have made it dirty. Oh, no, not at all. It's often the most educated elite, and you'll see why. Why did the Portuguese and then the British come to Madras at all? I mean, nobody would come to a place if it was so difficult to have water, but it was not so. Madras was a region with lots of lakes, lots of temple tanks, with lovely little villages, Mylapore, Triplicane, uh, Tirvatiur, Tirvanmayur, where we are situated, all dotting the area where there were lots of little lakes around which little settlements came up. And seeing this lovely little area, the, first the Portuguese and then the British, decided to make this a settlement for themselves. Next. And most importantly, there are two freshwater rivers. Now, it's not often that you have freshwater rivers, because as you know, this whole region, southern India, in, uh, India is called Vanampata Bhumi, that is um, rain-dependent land. Now, Kuvam is named after Kuvalan, which means hydrologist in Tamil. It starts at the village Kuvam in Tiruvallur district, it collects the water of 75 small lakes. It's 65 kilometers long, of which 18 kilometers is in Chennai city. There are ancient Shiva temples dotting the river, and documents in these temples say that having a dip in the Kuam could lead to salvation, and having a dip in the Kuam is equivalent to bathing in the river Ganga. Now, I would not advise you to either bathe in the Kuam or in the River Ganga. That's the state of pollution. Today, we have pollution from sewage, business outlets, chemical factories, etc., etc., etc. There's no dissolved oxygen in the river. There are heavy metals like copper and so on. There's no sign of any kind of life. And I mean, I'm talking about a river where my own father maybe about 50 years ago, would have swum. And over the years, it's become like this. So it's become such a terrible, stinking, polluted river. Next. The other river is Adyar River. This too is a freshwater river. It originates from Malaypatta tank near Chembarabakam Lake. It's 42 kilometers long and takes the surplus water from 40 tanks, lakes, and streams. You know, the previous time, uh, when I spoke about Kuam, I said 75 small lakes. Now it's 40 tanks and lakes. Just imagine how much water there was. There was an excess of water. There was so much water. That's why people came here. Until the 80s, I remember, I have seen mangroves in the Adyar estuary. I have seen flamingos come here in winter, and we had lovely bird life. Where? Not very far from here, Adyar Estuary. And that was the Adyar River. Today, where does the pollution come from? Slums? No. It comes from the most educated elite of Chennai, the IIT, Cancer Institute, and so on. Now, I mean, what's the use of our education if we don't do something about it? If I say, okay, what can I do? I know I'm working in IIT, but they are, I've spoken to IIT from the director onwards for many, many times, and they say, what can we do? The, uh, they just take it there. Of course you can do something. You have to do something. I mean, what is the use of, use of your education? You're in, inventing all kinds of things. All, we keep seeing in the papers that IIT scientists invented this, did that. And Cancer Institute is talking about cancer. This is one of the causes of cancer, pollution. So these are two freshwater lakes which we have, uh, freshwater rivers which we have effectively destroyed. The third, of course, is not fresh water. Next, Buckingham Canal, which is a salt water navigation canal. It was built in 1806, and it starts in Vijayawada in Andhra Pradesh and goes to Virupuram district via Pulikat, Ennore, Marakanam. And it's about 100, 420 kilometers long. In 1877-78, 
the Adyar and Kuom were linked to the Buckingham Canal as famine relief work. It was formerly used for transportation of people and goods. I mean, today you can't even see the Buckingham Canal in many places because of the rubbish from the uh, construction of the MRPS, which has been dumped in the Buckingham Canal. We should be ashamed to even look at such an ugly, dirty site. And because of that, the um, canal is no longer navigable. But I know that once upon a time, an ancestor of mine went all the way from Madras up to Vijayanagaram in Andhra to start a Sanskrit college. So that's how navigable it once was. Next. I told you earlier there were 125 wetlands in Chennai. Very few are left. And I'll tell you what's happened to many of them. Take Nagal Keni in Pallavaram. It's now called Chrome Pet. And the name itself is an insult to a freshwater lake. It's used as a sewage and chromium dump. And because of the chromium in the lake, it's called Chrome Pet. Chrome Leather Factory is also there. So people are still debating, is it named after Chrome Leather Factory or because of the chrome in the water? Either way, it's not a good idea. And so much was discharged that it has totally effectively destroyed uh, Chrome Pet. We did a water analysis of Pallavaram and Chrome Pet. That water there, the groundwater, is totally unfit for drinking because it is so heavily polluted with chrome. Pallikarne swamp was one thing that was left. Now, today, it's become a garbage dump. Today, all our garbage, the plastics, which we throw by the uh, kilos out every day, are thrown in Pallikarne dump. Pulikat Lake is still used by fishermen, but it's not the mangrove swamp it was. Of course, Vedan Tangal still remains as a bird sanctuary the waters are rich in bird manure, and at the end of the season, the waters are released to fertilize the rice fields. So what are the yeris left? Out of 125, only three are usable. Chembarabakam, Red Hills, and Pundi. Maybe a little bit in Porud, but very little is left. Next. This is what a yeri is like for those who haven't seen it. It's actually, actually an artificial lake. Next. Many water bodies have been filled with garbage, and we are living on top of that garbage. Lake area Nungambakam, what a beautiful name, lake area. So it reminds you of William Wordsworth, but there's no lake over there. It's Valluvar Kotam today. Arata Kuttai, a Kuttai is a small lake. Arata Kutte is now Nageshwar Rao Park. Koyambedu Yeri is now a bus stand. The bus stand of Koyambedu Bedu was a Yeri. And Vela Cheri, of course, is the, the MRTS has taken it over. Next, please. So this is what has happened to our Yeris today. Next. The other causes of disappearance of water bodies, deforestation. The British cleared island grounds. For example, I'm giving you an example. They cleared island grounds so that they could see the French. It was a thick forest beyond for, south of Fort St. George, between Fort St. George and Mylapore. Every tree was cut because the French would hide behind the trees and come through, and so that uh, they should, we should not... Actually, the French came in and took over the fort itself. So because of that, they cut down all the trees. Then encroachment. I particularly mention a private college, not one. There are many private colleges which extend into the Kuam, into the Adyar. And I mention it because these are centers of learning, of higher education. And they should not be doing things like this, but yet they do. Of course, official apathy and corruption, I don't have to talk about it and habitat destruction. We have destroyed the many habitats of uh, Chennai. For example, Mylapore was an area of Pune trees, Alexandrian laurel trees, which were used for making boats, the boats which 
went right down to Southeast Asia. And today there's no, uh, I mean, there's only one Purna tree in the temple. We have one in our compound. There are a few here and there, but very little. And there are no peacocks, which were there. I, I live on PTK Road in Alvar Pet. And there were peacocks even when I was a child. I've seen peacocks, jackal, palm civet, quite a lot of wildlife. Everything has gone. The deforestation, you can yourself find out about it. The names tell a story. Next one. Next, please. Yeah. Mangarde. We all know Mangarde as the temple uh, of uh, Kamakshi. But Mangarde really means a forest of mango trees. So just imagine how many mango trees there would have been to be called Mangade. Mailapur means town of peacocks and peahens. Pulikat comes from the word Paravair Kade, which means a forest of mangroves. And it was this whole coastline had a lot of mangroves. And look at the importance of mangroves. When the tsunami struck the east coast, the only place that was not damaged was Pichavaram where there were mangroves. Everywhere else, there were terrible damages. I have a feeling that this whole eastern coastline from West Bengal, that is Sundarbans downwards, would have been a very rich mangrove uh, coastline, mangrove forest, and everything has gone. Purashwakam, for example, um, which is in, uh, near off uh, Punamali High Road, was originally Purasei Pakam after Purasu, or the flame of the forest tree. So you can imagine the number of Purasu trees which were there to have named the place Purashavaka. Then next, Tenam Pet means coconut groves. Tirusulam is derived from Suram, which means a jungle path, and was once the headquarters of Suratur Nadu. So if there was a jungle path, it was right through the area, and that, of course, has gone. Thiruvair Kade means a forest of villa or acacia trees. Otteri means what the, means what the area or single reservoir. Veperi means neem trees on the banks of the Yeri. So all the names, nobody thinks about where we are living and what does my, the name of my street or the name of my area mean. It has a very important meaning because it tells you a story of a paradise that was lost, a paradise of trees, of lakes. So that is why when Helmut suggested, I, you're talking about paradise lost, I said, yes. And I hope he agrees that this is paradise lost. Then the other aspect of Madras, next please, uh, is yes, this one, stop here. Yeris of tanks. Madras is a rain-fed uh, region so the best form of irrigation is through tanks or areas that collect rainwater. Tanks are found all over Tamil Nadu, Yeris and Kovalkulam. That is, Yeris are tanks and Kovalkulam are temple tanks. They are surrounded by protective vegetation and siltation ponds. Traditionally, entire systems of community management, such as Kudimarmat, maintain these tanks. This was a kudimarmat was a system by which the richer landowners paid or in kind. The, in summer, of course, there was no work. So those who were landless would maintain all these tanks and they were paid in rice, dal, whatever it is, by the richer landlords. This way, there was also a distribution of food, of wealth. The tanks were connected to a larger to much larger rainwater harvesting systems so that the overflow of one went to another. Do you know that Panagal Park, where you all go shopping for saris, was a big yeri, a tank, and Mailapo, where you have PS High School, was yet another yeri, and the two were connected by a channel, which went from one place to another so that the overflow of one could go to another. It's not just there, about 97 such Tanks in northern Tamil Nadu were interconnected. But development, unfortunately, construction, roads, buildings, have destroyed the channels, have destroyed the tanks. 
When the rains arrive, there is nowhere for water to go. So we have floods. Last year, when the, fl when the rains came, I was standing on my balcony wondering what's happening because I saw a police van, a police jeep saying, Echerike, Temrabakam Yeri Tarandavitade. That means warning, warning, Temrabakam Lake has been opened. Please go home. And people were running home, and behind it came the water, behind this jeep came the waters, like a beautiful snake or even a dragon slowly winding its way through the roads because there's no way for the water to go. So the roads have become the new channels to take the water. Next. Kanchipuram and Tiruvallur districts are known as lake districts. Here the Pallava and Chola kings dug several lakes, such as, for example, Madipakam, Velacheri, Pallavaram, Polur, Sholing and Allur, so many within this area. Residential buildings and colonies have now come up where there were once lakes. Do you know, let, talking about Turvan Mayur, you have the Marudishwar temple over here. It had five temple tanks. Today, there's only one tank and one uh, well that is left because all the others were filled in with garbage and the land has been sold. The government has done it because as you know, temples come under the Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowments Board of the government. So they do what they want. So when the rains arrive, the former Yeris, which are now residential areas, get flooded. So you'll see that all the places which were very badly flooded last year are those areas which once had, were, why say had, which were once Yeris or tanks themselves. Then we have temple tanks. Next. The construction of a temple and a tank was a simultaneous process. That is why it's called Koval Kulam. Koval Temple Kulam means tank. Water was used for the ritual. Most temples had several tanks. One was for the ritual, another for the pilgrim who had to bathe, and so on. And the construction of a tank was an act of great merit. For provision of water was the greatest of dhanams, or charities, because India has always been a water-starved country. So people built tanks, and that was a form of charity. The temple tanks maintained the groundwater level. They were not, you could not drink water from them right through the year when there was water elsewhere. But at times of drought, you could take the temple water, and it provided sweet drinking water in times of drought. To prevent evaporation, plants like lily and lotus were planted in the temple tank. We have Tiruvallikeni, triplicane, which is named after the white lily, which was growing, which was planted in the ta temple tank, Tiru Ali Keli. And temple tanks had several medicinal properties due to the medicinal uh, herbs used in the Abhishekam, the ritual bathing of the deity. Next. I want to show you two tanks. Next. One is the Kandaswami Temple Tank in Park Town, which is still beautifully maintained. And we're not very far away is Parshwakam, Gangadishwara Temple Tank. This is a mess. The, this is the state. And unless the, the temple tank is desilted and the growth removed and at, uh, regularly, you don't, it cannot collect much water anymore. Around the next one, around the temple tanks, building were, buildings were constructed with tiled roofs that sloped towards the tank to harvest rain water. The surrounding roads or Madhavidi were made of mud so that the water went into the ground. Every effort in traditional architecture, in traditional town planning was made to conserve water. Now the sloping tiled roofs have been replaced by multi-storied buildings with flat roofs. And the roads are made of concrete and tar. So where will the water go into the tank? Next. The houses had a central courtyard. Those of you who have seen such a house, it's called a mitta. It had a central courtyard which was open to the sky, which ventilated the house. The floors were sloping towards a corner 
where an opening collected rainwater and led it through stone culverts into the family well at the back. Now, decisions. But also, sometimes it can't be helped because um, we are living in a difficult situation where we are living literally too many people in a small area, so you have to have multi-storied buildings. So this is a challenge, I would say, to architects, to designers, to town planners, to make sure that their homes and all become a little more environmentally friendly and especially rainwater friendly, because it's not enough to have one hole in the corner of the garden. It has to be continuous. I want to end with a couple of uh, statements, a couple of uh, quotations. Mylapore was described by the saint Tirunyana Sambandar, where honey trees grow in beautiful gardens on the seashore, where Dev Devi appeared in the form of a peahen. Triplicane was described by Tirumange Arvar as the place where the fragrance of the Kuravan flower in cool gardens, where cuckoos sing and peacocks dance, the sun's rays never penetrate the thick foliage of Tiruvalli Keni. I don't think that will ever happen today. In, about Tiruvan Mayur, where we all are sitting, someone that says, it's a place of beautiful mansions and gardens. And finally, a British writer describing Georgetown in the early 20th century says, it was planted with mangoes, coconuts, guavas, where everybody had the liberty of walking and purchasing delicious fruits for a song. Ladies and gentlemen, that madras no longer exists. But the reason I'm talking about the madras of the past is because that is the only way this region can survive. We can build more buildings, we can do anything, more roads, more auditoriums, anything. But that is not going to help us because we cannot live without the basics. And the most basic of basics is water. So if we don't have any way by which we can harvest and collect this rainwater, I don't know how long civilization in Chennai will last. Thank you very much.